तो इनके घर से हम औरतों के बेट में जो बच्चा है कोक में से निकाल के मारेंगे तो इन सुअरों की करो विदाई Well, we got more proof here that Hinduism is every bit as terroristic, murderous, violent, and barbaric as the Ishmaelite cult of Islam. This is on the uh, first post. It says, A history of riots in India shows how the Hindu right used religious processions to foment disorder. Governments can ensure that religious processions don't end in violence. For that, though, the lives of innocent citizens, especially minorities, should matter to them. And of course, it doesn't matter under Hindu theocracy because just like Islam, uh, it's basically a, like a Hindu holy war against non-Hindus. So if you're not if you're not a Hindu, then you basically have less rights. You know, it's no different than Islam. But continuing on in the article, in the mid '80s, a spate of communal riots sparked off by religious processions led to a public debate on whether such processions should be banned. An entire generation of Indians has grown up since, and we are still seeing processions taken out in the name of religion ending in communal violence. Mad, I'm probably not going to pronounce like a lot of these Indian terms, right? So I may just skip over them. But essentially this, this village, I guess, or town, saw violence in the last week of December when processions were taken out by the Vish, Vishwa Hindu Parishad to uh, collect funds for the this, this Hindu temple they're trying to build up. The pattern of violence uh, shows a formula perfected by the Sang Paravar since the late 60s. When the first post-independence riots took place, the formula was this, organize the procession as a, as a show of strength, uh, mark out a route that passes through a Muslim mohalla, uh, linger in, so basically, basically linger in front of the mosque, play loud music, especially if it's namaz time, throw gulal at the mosque, and shout incendiary slogans. Do this until the Muslims are provoked and the throwing stones at the processionists, and then go on a rampage against them, knowing the police will support you. Yeah, and by the way, the cops are often, you know, in bed with the Hindu terrorists. So, but yeah, it's it's a it's a deceptive type of thing. And by the way, again, I'm not trying to like be pro-Islam because as far as I'm concerned, Islam and Hinduism are just two sides of the same Luciferian Jesuit coin. But it's a, it's a good little tactic they use. They show their strength. They, they you know, antagonize the Muslims and then when they respond, they're like essentially cry victim after, you know. It's it's typical. It, it's no different than, than the uh, taqiyya of Islam. The, the, uh, the, their, what they call sacred deception. Same thing. Further proving it's just two sides of the same Luciferian Jesuit coin. Continuing on, the big riots of the 70s and 80s al almost all had this trigger, sometimes resulting in both communities competing out to, to a bigger show of strength. Certain occasions came to be associated with the riots, and they gave a bunch of different examples. One of them was actually a riot between Sunni and Shia Muslims. Uh, I'm not going to list half those Indian names, I can't even pronounce them. Uh, if these occasions passed off peacefully, editorials would be written. In the mid eight, sorry, in the eighties, such processions were uh, painted, sorry, painted as yatras by the Vishwa Hindu Parishad. The nineteen eighty one visit they converted a bunch of people to uh, Islam, made the BHP take out uh, a bunch of this other stuff. In the nineteen eighty three, aimed at uniting Hindus across the uh, across caste over twin sim over the twin symbols of the Ganga Jal and Bharat Mata riding on a tiger. In nineteen eighty five, they I guess it is a campaign they put on. Essentially, it sparked off another riot, Hindu terrorist riot. What a surprise. In December 1992, the first stone thrown in the 1992-93 Mumbai riots came from a victory procession celebrating the demolition of the Babri Masjid, which passed by a mosque in the narrow lane of 
I'm not going to bother. The rally was held by local Sina le leaders, but Congress members participated too. The slogans shouted were so abusive that they could not be read out in the open court during the hearings of the BN Shri whatever. Basically, this commission they set up to investigate these Hindu terrorists, and these essentially the Muslim terrorists and the Hindu terrorists going at it with each other. Continuing on the article, the same was said by no less than the Mumbai police commissioner to the to, to that commission. Uh, essentially, it was not the cause of the riots, but basically they're saying that the 1992-93 riots was it was the opposition by the Muslims, though unconstitutional, means that generated communal tension. He said so. Basically, like passing on the blame to what they were doing. The aggressive display of religiosity in such processions that insist on passing through Muslim areas have anything to do with devotion as justice shriek whatever put it in his report though intensely religious the vhp ram pudaka processions taken out in mumbai after july 1992 had less of religion and more of politics previously the processionists would shout j basically hindu slogans but the audio way they basically this movement they had replaced it with jay shri ram which by the way is just the hindu equivalent of allahu akbar if you see hindus when they basically riot and attack people they don't agree with, you'll hear them shouting Jay Shri Ram because it's basically just their version of Allah Akbar. Further showing that Hinduism is just no different than Islam, every bit as bloody and violent. The lynchings of Muslims uh, marked the January 1993 phase of the Mumbai riots and that have become the hallmark of the last six years have also been accompanied by slogans of Jay Shri Ram. Can it still be called a religious slogan? Yeah, notice that they're rioting they're, and they're chanting praises to their Hindu deities. No different than what you'd see from any Muslim. Again, further showing it's just two sides of the same coin. And, and you hear them, they'll attack Muslims and shout Jay Shri Ram, and Muslims will attack them and shout Allahu Akbar. Because why? They're just basically filled with devils and they're just praising their false gods as they do their satanic violence. It's just two forms of Satanism fighting each other, I'll put it that way. So why is it, uh, with all this experience in the last six decades, we're still seeing lives and properties uh, in danger by religious procession? I don't know, probably because you got two forms of Satan's kingdom going at it with each other. You know, but again, just further showing Hinduism is not any different than Islam. They even have their own little war cry to their false god, that the, similar to how the Muslims do it. Why? Well, it's both death worship. Proverbs 8 verse 36 says, All that they hate me love death. But such a description is true of both Hinduism and Islam. And this is probably going to get called both Hindu-phobic, which apparently is actually a word, and also Islamophobic. But guess what? It's the truth. So, anyway, wanted to point that out. John 8 44 shows who... Uh, Essentially, that fact that these are both just two forms of Satanism because it's about death and murder. So, anyway, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.